Hey everybody, Ryan Jackson here. Hope you're having a great day. So this video is going to cover 120.84, which is multifamily dwelling unit load calculations. And this change cracks me up. I love when this happens. Um, you know, the code's written by humans and you know, sometimes we're, we're not perfect, right? In fact, we're never perfect. <laughs> sometimes we screw up. And 120.84 had a flaw for like 50 years and nobody ever caught it. And, you know, you got to remember, the, the code doesn't fix itself, right? I mean, if, if there's a problem in the code book and nobody sees it, well, it's going to stay in there. And, it, it you know, somebody has to spot it and somebody has to take the initiative to change it. So it's important. And, and really, I'm going to get on a soapbox here for just a minute. If you see something that you think is wrong in the code book and really needs to be changed, change it. It's really easy. Go to go to nfpa.org slash 70. Okay, seven, why 70? Well, because NFPA 70 is the National Electrical Code. So nfpa.org slash 70. You're going to scroll down. You're going to go on Next Edition. And then you're going to scroll down a little bit more, and it'll say Submit Public Input. You click that, and it's so easy to make a code change proposal. You hit Submit Public Input, and basically the code book comes up. And you can scroll down and you can go to 120.84 and you click on it. And then the words come up and you just, you edit it. You delete the words you think should be deleted. And you add the words you think should be added. And then you hit the enter button, just like you're editing a document. And then you're going to have to, of course, explain why. So you're going to say, hey, this rule is screwed up for 20 years and here's why. And, you know, you explain why. And if there's a technical substantiation, you need to provide it. Uh, and then you, you know, fill out the little thing saying, yes, I'm me and I'm not somebody else and this is my real name. And, and then you hit enter and you're pretty much done. It's super easy to make a code change proposal. But if nobody does it, then the code's never going to get better, right? So perfect example here in 120.84 of a person that saw that the code was flawed and needed to be changed. So we changed it, right? Let's take a look. 120. Branch circuit feeder service load calculations, 120.84 multifamily dwellings. Load calculations for multifamily dwelling units were reduced. And remember, that part is because the load calculation went from 3VA to 2VA per square foot, right? So obviously it got reduced. But the change specifically here in 120.84 that we're going to talk about is three phase services are better addressed. Um, <laughs> it, it's funny, you know, it was just it was wrong for a long time. If a feeder or service supplies three or more dwelling units of a multifamily dwelling, then the load can be calculated using this section, right? 120.84A1 or A2. A1. If a feeder or service supplies three or more dwellings of a multifamily dwelling, table 120.84C can be used instead of part three of this article if... Each dwelling is supplied by only one feeder, each dwelling has electric cooking units, and then there's the exception there, or each unit has air conditioning or electric space heating or both. And then of course the neutral load is calculated using 120.61. So nothing new here, right? That, that's what the code has said for a long time. But here's the change. For a three phase, four wire service, let's just stop for one second here. Um, if you have a big apartment complex, let's say you've got 60 units, right, in this apartment complex. Well, if you have 12208 for the service, you're probably going to supply each individual unit with single phase 208, right? Black, red, black, red, blue, white, red, blue, white, black, blue, white, right? You're going to supply two hots and a neutral, single phase 208 to each individual units. And that's what's important. That's what got missed. So for a three phase four wire service, if three or more dwellings are supplied by single phase 120 slash 208 and one uh, and you've complied with what we just read, then the load is calculated based on twice the maximum number of dwelling units connected between any two phases. Okay, listen, if you've ever done range calculations for multifamily with three phase 208 and single phase 208 going to each range, if you've ever done ranges, this is what was missing. We had this for ranges, but we didn't have it for the total dwelling. So here's the deal. I've got this, uh, this apartment building. There's 30 units in the apartment building, but you're not going to calculate the load based on 30 units. You're going to calculate it based on 20. And here's why. Here's why. You're not going to take phase A, B, and neutral to all 30 units. 
you're going to take AB neutral to this one. You're going to take BC neutral to this one. You're going to take CA neutral to this one, and then rinse and repeat. So the maximum number of units supplied by phase A and phase B is 10. The maximum number of units supplied by B and C is 10. And the number supplied by C and A is 10. So that means phase A has 20 units on it, phase B has 20 units on it, and phase C has 20 units on it. So why do I have to calculate the load based on 30 units when only 20 of them are loaded up on any given wire? No wire in this building is touching all 30 units, right? So now what we're going to do is when we're doing the load calculation, let, let's just say that the, that the, uh, the calculation is, I don't know, 10,000 volt amps per unit, just to make it easy, right? So now what you're going to do is you're going to say, okay, each unit has 10,000 VA, but there's only 20 units. There's not 30. So you're going to take your 20 units times your calculated load. Then you're going to plug that into your demand factor, and you're going to say, okay, there's only 20 units. See, people are misunderstanding this change. And they're saying, well, wait a minute, this just screwed me. Now I only get to pretend there's 20 units when I'm doing the, the, the demand factor? No, 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 no. Before you get to the demand factor, you get to pretend that 10 units are gone. You don't even count those other 10 units, right? You're going to look at this 30 unit building and you're going to say, okay, there's only 20 units here. Then you're going to times it by your VA. Then you're going to plug it into your demand factor. So this in every instance is going to result in a smaller load calculation than what it did in the 2023 and previous versions. Again, this is something that is not going to be new to you if you've done load calculations for dwelling unit ranges that are supplied by single phase 208, right? This is going to, you're, you're going to see this and you're going to say, holy cow, why were we not doing this for the last 50 years? Well, because nobody caught the error, right? And if people don't submit code changes, the code doesn't fix itself. So there you go. All right. We're going to see you guys on the next video. We're going to leave article 120. And okay, we're going to talk about GFCIs 210.8. So always a hot topic, right? But spoiler alert, for the first time in probably 30 years, we really didn't expand GFCIs very much at all in the 2026. So I think you'll probably be happy about that. All right, guys, see you on the next video. Be safe out there. Have a wonderful day. See you soon.